In this tutorial, we are going to study about macros in C++. Well, macros are very useful and they are also in other programming languages as well. For example, C Sharp also has macros. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first show you a program with where we are not going to use a macro. And then I will tell you how we can optimize that code using a macro. All right, so let's start with this. So let's suppose first I create a variable which is a equals 2. So now I've created a variable in a equals to 2. And if I will create another variable, let's say b equals to 3, something like this. So there are two variables in this program a equals to 2 and b equals to 3. So the moment you write these two lines, what the compiler will do is compiler will allocate the value of a as 2 inside the memory. So this is actually stored in the memory. So the value of a which is 2, it is stored in the memory. So whenever further you are going to use this value, which is something like this. If you will use this value of a, which is stored inside the memory in the program, what the processor will do is the processor will try to access this value of a, which is stored inside the memory. Now, when you are performing only one single access, you can see here that the processor accesses a in the memory. So let's suppose you have a program where you have a variable and you are using that variable or I can say that that variable is occurring for lots of times in your program. In that scenario, the processor is acc will access that variable for lot of time, which is going to uh, take some processing time also. Plus it is additionally taking some storage in the memory. So can we optimize this program? Can we have some other way where we do not need to even store a variable inside the memory and we can actually uh, the processor will not be able to access it in the memory since we are not storing it in the memory. So now we're going to use macros which are basically preprocessor directives and what it helps us in doing is it does not store a particular value inside the memory. So the processor will not be uh, accessing that and so the processing time will not take place. So what are preprocessor directives? Now you can see in the program here, the first line, the very first line, hash include iostream, it starts with the symbol hash. Now hash means that it is a preprocessor directive. Now the compiler, what the compiler does is, the compiler will first compile this whole program and then only you will be able to run it, right? Now, when you have these preprocessor directives, the compiler will not try to compile the whole program, which is the program which goes somewhat here. What it will do is, it will first process these directives. So that's why it is known as preprocessor directives. Now, iostream.h is a header file. So in here, we are actually telling the compiler that before compiling the whole program, what you just do is in include this iostream.h header file in the program. So that's how we actually tell the program, tell the compiler that how we can give some pre-processing directives to the, to the compiler. So pre-processing directives are basically we are telling the compiler that before compiling the whole program, just process these tasks. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you another directive, which is the define directive, which is another pre-processing directive because it starts with hash symbol. Now what this directive does is if I will write some variable a, or a name a and I will assign some value 4 to it. So this means that whenever the compiler will compile this, when it is, it will come to this line, which is this one, 
what it will do is it will replace all the values of a that are coming inside our program so let's suppose we have uh, a variable which is in b and i'm telling b that b is equals to a plus one so before compiling this program what the compiler will does is compiler knows that this is a preprocessor directive since we are using hash symbol and define means that we are actually replacing all the occurrences of a with four so the compiler will try to generate a code which will not use this code instead of this code it will use a code something like this so instead of int b equals to a plus one the compiler will generate a code where a will be replaced by four because we have provided this directive here so this means that the value of a equals to four is not actually storing inside the memory and since it is not storing inside the memory whenever you are going to use it the cpu does not need to access it inside the memory which also makes the processing time or it actually optimizes our code so this a here as you can see is a macro and this is a macro because it is pre-processing uh, before compilation so if you have some more occurrences of a and if this variable a is occurring a lot of time in your program we are not storing it the compiler will generate a code a separate code which will replace a with four now we do have some disadvantages of this which we will discuss in the next tutorial when we are going to instead of using a single variable we are going to use functions so this means that if a function is occurring for lots of time in a program we can actually uh, use this defined preprocessor directive so that the compiler will replace the occurrence of that function with the definition which we will provide in this line now remember that a4 is not a variable it's a constant so if you will try to change the value of a as a equals to a plus one you're not allowed to do that you can see here if i will hover my, my mouse on a it says that expression must be a modifiable value so this means that a is a constant it cannot be changed so that's an optimization that you can do and that's how we use macros in uh, c plus plus and uh, in the next tutorial we will be talking about macro functions and we will also cover some of the other macros that we can use in c plus plus programming so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching